What's up, everyone? Welcome to Bench. We have the Tobar Brothers. Joey here, of course, joined by Angel. What's up, man? Hello. Friday weekend. It's Friday. Hope you guys had a great week. Um, hope you enjoyed a very, very interesting uh, Thursday night football game. Weird. Weird. The Raiders blew the brakes out. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, full transparency here. We were recording uh, Friday evening. So it's a, truly a Friday show. Yeah, so it's truly We're not a Friday lying. show. Um, but a lot of you will hear this Saturday, so happy Saturday as well. Okay, before we start the show, your tag once again, sticking. Man, it's just white hat, man. It's yeah. just white hat. It betrays me. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, a lot of you will see this Saturday, so happy Saturday as well. Hope you're settling in, uh, if it is Saturday, for a great day of football. Yeah, it's football on. So just wash God. that Thursday night game right out of your mind. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, especially if you're a Chargers fan. If you're a Raider fan, you're living in that shit. Just living it. Yeah, listen, the Broncos recovered and had time to recover from that 70-pointer. Chargers. Chargers. Just bad news after that. <laughs> this and then that and then that and then this. Poor Chargers fans, all start seven do, of them. Just start doing mock drafts. That always gets me happy. Yeah, yeah. Just start doing mock drafts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what a crazy game. Yes, we'll get into that and uh, much, much more on this episode. We're going to get into the news, of course. Uh, Friday's questions, Sunday's answers. And then we're going to talk some fantasy playoff talk. we got some fantasy uh, football matchups we're going to be looking at. A couple playoff teams from our own fantasy footballers. The bench warmers. Uh, bench warmers league. Shout out to all the bench warmers out there, guys. You know who you are. Yeah. It's the fantasy footballers league. I guess you know a podcast I listen to. Uh. Uh, game picks for week uh, number 15. And then our fantasy football awards. Hmm. We give away an MVP, a rookie of the year. Uh, uh, yeah. It's a uh, comeback player of the year. And a, the big one. An MVP. MVP. I said Ooh. that. What did I, what I miss? Nothing. I don't think I'm going to say anything. Nope. Nope. As usual, on point. Uh, if you're watching here on YouTube, thanks so much for joining us. If it's hey. your first time. Hi. Thank you for you're watching and uh, spending a couple moments here with us talking football. We're just two brothers from L.A. Two blokes. Two blokes. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Two, uh, man, I got a lot of uh, Peaky Blinders language in Peaky my mind. Peaky Blinders, mate. Yeah, I'm just, oh, I'm, in, I'm in season six already. In Birmingham. Yeah, Birmingham. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Um, Tom A. <laughs> you should just do that throughout the show, right? Really? Like, Tommy. Yeah. Who the fucking Peaky Blonde does, mate? When, when we're like stuck in an argument, you should be like, Tommy. Tommy. And I'll just break, you'll just break it. All right. Um, Billy Butcher. <laughs> the Billy Boys. The Billy Boys. All right, we got to move on here. Okay, sorry. Especially if they haven't, if they haven't even seen I can do that. I know. <laughs> if you haven't seen Peaky Blinders. Yeah, I don't know what. If you're Honestly, it. I give you permission to turn us off right now and go start watching Peaky Blinders. If you're a dude. Who loves gangster stuff or manly stuff yeah. or just cool stuff? Peaky Blinders. Somehow, not everyone's seen it. The BBC got this one right. This yeah. is a fantastic show. What a review you just gave of them. Thank you for that. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, Killian Murphy is listening to a football podcast yes, right now. Absolutely. Seems yeah. like seems like that type of guy. Yeah, for sure. No, he's listening to a football match. No, he's listening. No, he's listening to like like uh, like Beethoven stuff right now. Yeah, trying to get into the next character. Um, where were we? Oh yeah, if you're watching yeah. on YouTube, thanks oh, yeah. so much for joining us. How do we get here? And if you're if you're new to the show, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so we can mm. you Wait. can uh, get Wait. notifications. Likes over here. Oh yeah, get notifications. Right. I was I'm always con- confused on what you're doing with that. Point but yeah, I got, I got you. You're helping out the people. It's down there. Um, but subscribe to the show. We we release shows three days a week, uh, no matter what. As you can tell, here we are again. Here we are just uh, doing stopping at nothing. Yeah. Um, to, to put an episode out today. And then um, Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, all those audio platforms. Thank you so much for you. Uh, you guys joining us on the audio version of Bench with the Tovar Brothers. And then Instagram, X, and TikTok. Uh, make sure you're following those platforms, especially here as we're uh, going down the uh, final stretch here of the regular season. It's coming down, the baby. Playoff, uh, the playoff races are they're he- hot. heating up. They're oh, hot. Yeah. They're spicy. Absolutely. And they're ever-changing. Uh, with every single game, because there's so many teams involved. Only, I think, two teams so far have been eliminated. Which is crazy, because we're in week about to be start week 15, right? Yeah. It's crazy that it's this late, and only two teams are out of the playoffs. Yeah, it's amazing. Technically, it's, it's, yeah. it's that, it's that uh, competitive this year. And uh, so, yeah, make sure you're following us on all those platforms. Uh, search at Benched Show. It's spelled just like this. And uh, we will uh, we'll see you there on that. Um, I think that's all I have for that. Uh, before we get into news, I do have one of your... Uh, one of your uh, favorite lists to go through. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this will be the last one. I won't do this anymore. Now, next, okay. week, next week I want to do some Christmas stuff. Okay. Right? Okay, so so uh, for the... I love how you're trying to put music and everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the for the last couple... Uh, last week or so, uh-huh. I've been uh, quizzing Angel with 
2020 lists from 2023 to see how plugged in he was this last year in okay. the current culture. I, I like think I this am. one is right up your alley because it, it, the theme is shopping. Okay. Um, I know I know a couple things about you. You love shopping. Uh huh. Um, oh, I can say that one. <laughs> you love shopping. You love shopping. Latin, Latin women. women. Okay. <laughs> My nieces, you love my nieces? Or my nieces, my daughters? Goodness gracious. That can go really far. Yep, yep, yep. I started it, and I was like, you, nope, just stop it. I love okay. the Broncos. I'll do that. These are the top 10 things um, purchased on Amazon. Oh, God. Okay. No, this is now, a housewives buying you're n- Nope, you're going to be surprised. So you're not going to be able to guess these, obviously. It's too hard. There's yeah, some, you know, it's obviously. impossible. So many things. Um, I want you to tell me what, if you've purchased one of these things or thought about purchasing one of these things this year. Okay, cool. That give makes it, sense. Give it to All right, me. number 10. PlayStation Store gift card, uh, a digital gift card. Yeah, for myself. Yeah, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm so that's a very... Play on the PS5. That's a very you 2023 thing. Yes. Yes. Gamer, for yep. sure. Um, Amazon Basics dog and puppy pee pad, number nine. Isn't that incredible? I have an outdoor dog, so no. A lot of indoor dogs, I guess. Yeah, a lot of uh, I have people. An dog. Yeah. Um, this I've never heard of. Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. It's a game, I think. Taco Cat Goat um, Cheese Pizza. Yeah, I'll read the little thing here. Uh, this fun and incredibly quirky party game is hilarious. So, yeah. So, I'm you know what's funny. Whole thing. Okay. Uh, funny and quirky, but it's the number eight seller. I've never heard of it before. That's wild, yeah. Um, so, that's a, that's a no. Um, double-sided tape, number seven. I don't know why I would use it, but I'm assuming. I mean, it's. I purchased that this year. It's. Yeah, I'm sure it's great for whatever reason. Uh, number six, a telescope. A certain brand, I'm not hey. sure to say. Uh, G. Skyer. A lot of people are trying to see what the uh, what the stars oh, tell us. Or maybe the UFO stuff going on this year. Yeah, yeah, maybe there it, that is. it is. Yeah, maybe you will capture it in your little telescope. Crack the case, mate. Yeah. Another game, Unstable Unicorns card game. Do people play card games this much? No, but ever since COVID, a lot of people work from home. Ah, so this might be just you and your you yeah. and your wife or your you know your whatever. That makes sense. Yeah, home. This playing. one's interesting. Life Straw Personal Water Filter. Okay. Perfect for wilderness lovers. This small but powerful water filter is making a big splash on Amazon this year. Not only does this product, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, basically, it's a straw that you can drink out of a river with because it filters it as oh, you, you drink it. Oh, you just put it right, right in yeah. the river? I don't trust that thing either nope. way. I'm going to get the nope. runs either way. Yeah. I don't want that. Uh, but number four, seller. Why are so many people buying that? Are you guys drinking out of the river out there? Like what? A lot of people just want to drink out of, out of rivers even though we have fully Why is this a number four bottle? seller? I don't know. People like people. People like some weird shit. What are you people doing out there? I don't know. I, don't, you know what? I see that river. It's green. <coughs> I want to drink out of it. No, That's wild. Just go to just go to Costco. Get a bunch of Kirkland water bottles. Uh, the Yeti Rambler 14 ounce mug. Now I have this exact mug, and this wow. thing is fantastic. You see my Yeti mug? You have a lot the, of Yeti the, mugs. The uh, the metal one. You have a lot of metal right, with Yeti. the cap. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Um, the uh the short one. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It keeps. I mean, keeps your cold colds and your hot hot. For it's a long time, keeps the, there's a cover on. I feel like people working from home over a laptop all the time, like this isn't ideal. And like coffee. Honestly, computer. though, it's kind of a flex. Like when a you little get, Yeti mug? When you get a Yeti. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like I, I, I drink coffee and also like that's fair. I'm, I'm bougie about it. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Sometimes when I was on, uh, I'd be on a meeting, I'd make sure the Yeti signal was facing the Just camera. so you know, like, yo, like I'm up. You know like, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like, yeah. Even with this one, I'm just going to show you. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, Benched. Dude. Purchase nowhere because it's a, it's a limited edition. Yeah, limited edition. Two uh, okay, here we go. Uh, number two, Amazon Fire Stick. Get a smart TV. What is happening? I feel like every TV is a smart TV. That's Why just... do you need an Amazon Fire Stick? People struggling out there. People oh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. I may have jumped to conclusions here. It's a TV stick. So is this in, in, in place of, ca- of cable or? I don't know. Yeah, free and live TV. Oh, free? Cap. Wait a minute here. I might need to buy me one of those. Black on the play. Very good. Okay, and number one, you're, you're going to really appreciate this. Uh, what, what kind of shoes are you wearing right now? Uh, Crocs. Me too, and that's the number one seller on Amazon. Yeah, let me some Crocs. Amazon, number one seller, Crocs, unisex, adult, classic clogs. We're both wearing them right now because yep. they're freaking comfortable. Yep. And, unexpected, they're warm. Yeah, they're warm. They're warm when you need to be warm. Because they're rubber. Like, you just gain all the body. He just stays nice in there. right now. It's wide. You can put it in sport mode. If you, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, some, something might pop off. You're ready to go. I feel like shopping-wise, we were both very plugged in in that list. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. That's, I feel like we're very current 2023 shoppers. Okay, let's get into the news. <laughs> 
Week 15's news uh, is all over the place, honestly. Some good stuff, some crazy stuff, some sad stuff. So let's uh, jump into it here. Brandon Staley, um, right after his loss uh, yesterday, 63-14, to 14, uh, told the world that, yes, he should keep his job. He's no, he knows what he's done, his track record for the last three years. Um, about, about the game specifically, he says games like this happen uh, in the NFL, and sometimes um, it just happens like that. Yeah. Hey, hey, I know I got blown out, but, hey, this happens, okay? Yeah. This is normal. A couple hours later, the Chargers responded. Uh, Chargers fire head coach Brandon Staley. This is not normal. <laughs> Brandon, please. That, is, that was crazy, dude. That, uh, what, what, <laughs> everything's fine. We're fine. What We're if that okay. was the final straw? What? What if Dean Spanos is up there and is like, should I fire this guy? I don't know, man. Maybe he's learning. Maybe he's like, just growing. Uh, situation then, normal. Yeah, and then he turns on the TV <laughs> and he sees, says, uh, here's, here's his coach say, no, nah, that stuff just happens nah, sometimes. Dude, dude. Sometimes you give up 63. Dude, yeah. I lost a playoff game last year. I deserve to be here. <sighs> Interesting. Ben Staley fired. Also, Tom Telesco, the GM, fired. Um, just for affiliation. Yeah, just hasn't built. I got the roster just hasn't, hasn't worked. The roster's been good. So the head coach, it's um, the coach now that that's been bad. Shout out to Tom. Sixty percent of their salary cap goes to four players. I and it's and it, it's crazy. It's in like Khalil Mack, Bosa, Khalil Mack, Bosa, Mike Williams, and Keenan Allen. Mike Williams. Um, if you throw in Herbert. It has to be almost 75 or something like that. That means next year they're going to be in some... Uh, whoever <coughs> takes that... It's a good job to take. Mike Williams is gone. No, he can't. He's hurt. He can't. Keen, no. Keen Allen's gone. And you just paid him. I doubt that... I could... The, the dead money is probably just pretty high. Him. Yeah. Keen Allen's gone. Ah, <sighs> dang. Uh, Kilo Mack is long gone. Joey Bosa you bring back. Yeah. Wow. Uh, they also fired the run game coordinator just for the hell of it. Hey, you know what? You go too. Jay Rogers. Uh, he's probably just standing. You know what happened? He probably just like was outside the meeting room, and he got and Wilson got you know Joe got fired. Yeah. He walked out and walked out. What's your name? You're fired too. Yep. It's like what the or he was con- he was consoling. Yeah, uh, Brandon Staley. Like it's okay, it'll be dude. all right, man. It is. And then normal. Dean walked out and said, "Oh, you're out too. You know, you're out too." Because that's how that's how the kings of old did it. Yeah. If you were friends of the king prior, you had to go too. Yeah. Because now you're a threat. Yeah. You don't want any any enemies with yeah. the organization. And they want no threats to new interim coach. Giff Smith. Heard Giff. of him? Giff Smith. Have you ever heard of him? No. Okay, what about the uh, interim GM? Jojo Wooden. These aren't real names. These are real names, and they are really in charge Jojo. Of, the, of the LA Chargers now. Uh, Giff and Jojo there. It's all going to work out an now. An incredible team. Yeah. Um, I think Giff Smith was the linebacker's coach and a former Rutgers linebacker. So, former Rutgers, great. Uh, Taking a page <laughs> out of... Uh, the Raiders book to get a, get a linebacker, a former linebacker, and get a fiery guy out there. I feel like at halftime yesterday, everyone knew this was coming. Yeah. Like, you didn't need an insider. We didn't need, we didn't need a Schefter. We didn't need Rappaport. It's, like, it's happening. We knew this, this was happening just yeah. a matter of time, and they just got to report it. Um, this is the third head coach who's been fired, and the second GM has been fired so far. Tell you what, Brandon Staley will find a job next year for sure. He was a great defensive coordinator. Yeah. I think a head coach might not be his thing. Great coordinator. You guys get paid very well. Look what the Browns did with Jim with Jim Schwartz. Now he's back in the. Go. I can see him. He's part of that Rams tree, so he's going to end up with one of those Rams head coaches that are out there yeah. now. Um, is Ben Johnson on Rams the Rams tree guy? I'm not sure, but he, pay up with him. Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, so yeah, those are the big changes happening there in in LA with the Chargers. We called it. We've been talking about this for weeks now. Yeah, this, this is going to happen, and it finally. The uh, 63 points was the final straw. Against the Raiders, Aiden O'Connell was, like, tearing him up. Aiden O'Connell was tearing him up. Shout out to Raider fans. Who Four touchdowns, like, no interceptions. Raider fans probably hyped now. We yeah, got our Aiden guy. O'Connell. This is the guy. No. Okay, listen, I'm a big guy. But I don't play in the NFL. Okay. And I don't play quarterback in the NFL. This is news to me. Um, Aiden O'Connell is, has a weird body for a quarterback. Yeah, and as a, um, as a man who's part of the mustache nation, he has a bad one. He has a terrible mustache. Because it's, it's like a pudgy face. He looks like a 14-year-old. Yeah, I think he, he looks like a 14-year-old who, I won't say that, but he looks like a 14-year-old who's a little mischievous. Yeah. Who, who, who's a little naughty. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah. little yeah. mischievous who, yeah. Um, yeah, just just does like mischievous teenager things. Yeah. Uh, but no, he's a starting quarterback for the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, Aiden. And he just cost Braden Staley, Brandon Staley's job. Yeah, baby. So good for you, Aiden. Him and CJ Stroud out here, rookie quarterbacks just... Causing court, uh, co- uh, coaches to get wow. fired. Uh, Lions safety, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, medically cleared and beginning his practice window. Um, likely going to start practicing next week. Huge 
news for the Lions. Yeah, they've been struggling on defense. They need any kind of help. This is fantastic. Yeah. He's also an incredible trash talker. Yeah, he's one of the best. Voted the best by the players. So probably really funny it's too. It's a nice element to add to your team. The I players. probably what they, I, I wonder what they don't show on TV. What's like too oh. vulgar? I want to hear that. Imagine how fun a job it is to be the guy who reviews the tape. Or oh, the guy holding the big, the big circle thing. Oh, uh, he said what? He said, dude, <laughs> Phil, Phil, did you hear that, dude? Yeah, he's probably <laughs> great. I want to. They, they probably have to sign like so many like different types of NDAs, like. You cannot. You like, cannot say what he just said. Stuff. Yeah. All the racist stuff, I'm sure, or something. Racist, just vulgar, about sisters, moms. About mothers. Yeah, it's probably oh. terrible. It gets nasty. Who, it's probably really funny. You think Sardar got... Okay, so there's a couple kind of trash talkers. There's those kind who are just are going to go... Or There's no there's no playing fair. Like, nothing's yeah. off limits. Yeah. I'm going to talk about your mom. And I'm not just going to say, oh, your mom's fat. And like, no, I'm going to say something vulgar about your yeah. mother. Yeah, yeah. Or there's the trash talkers like Brandon Graham. Who's like, I got something for you. I got something for you. This no, play. Those, those are old the, school the trash ones, talkers. Brian Dawkins like, I'm going to take a soul out of yeah, you. Yeah, those kind of guys. Like, what the hell are you talking yeah, about, dude? Like the football talk yeah. guys. Yeah. Um, or there's the guys who are just trying to piss you off, honestly. Yeah. Um, who, uh, I think of DK Metcalf. <laughs> uh, Draymond Green, like, exactly. Draymond, well, yeah. Draymond Green just punch you. He's just, he'll just punch you in the face. He's just, I'm just so it. happy he's suspended. Indefinitely. I just want to throw that out there. It's not a basketball show. Yeah, my boy, a right hook. But, uh, hook. He didn't mean to hit him, though. No. He didn't mean to hit him. Just a reaction you do. Because the only turn, you just instinctively turn your <laughs> right let's, hook. Let's get back. Because if we go on Draymond Green. Yeah, it'll be we, a long time. A you know, I like Draymond Green. But that was like, dude, it'll hide it better. Anyway, um, all that to say, uh, CJ Gardner-Johnson might come back. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, the NFL had a couple of talks this uh, week. And... Um, shared a couple of the decisions that might be looming here in the offseason. Um, two of them have been the topic of conversation across pretty much every show you've seen that has to do with the NFL. Uh, the first one is involving the tush push. I'm sick of this conversation. You're sick of this conversation. And apparently the NFL is sick of it too because they basically said, we're not going to get rid of it. Quote, uh, Troy Vincent, um, who's an ex-Eagle. Oh. Interesting. Oh. Um, you don't want to punish someone for doing something well. And that's really what all we've been saying. It's a quarterback sneak with a little bit of juice in the ex- at the at the end. Other teams are trying it. No one's doing as well as the Eagles. Get Brady, Brady did it at an elite level for years, yes. and no one's saying anything about Brady. Yep. Uh, like the, just the pushing that gets people mad. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is the hip drop tackle. Codell, um, speaking of that, said we have to get it out of the league. We well, that's agree. terrible. That's so – that's like – you that put, has that has caused some of the most gruesome injuries. You put your whole weight on someone's knees, calf – yeah, and it's, it literally just snaps bones. Yeah, it just it's, get it out of here. It's not think of, worth think, it. think of a Khalil Mack just getting his his mitts on your hips and then dropping his whole two hundred sixty pound body on God. your on your ankle. And the, he'll get hurt. The, the, these guys' legs. I mean, that's how is this how Nick Chubb got hurt. Uh, no, but this no, this is how Pollard got got hurt last year. Yes, he was the one last year who got hurt. Ugh. And he hasn't really been the same since. Okay, moving on here. The Falcons will likely not fire Arthur Smith after the season, barring a, quote, late-season collapse. So, they're two games below 500. So, what is a late-season collapse? <laughs> barring a collapse. I mean, five, under 500, that's pretty good for us. I mean, okay. we're, Arthur, we're pretty good. What's the owner's name? Arthur, uh, Arthur Blank. Arthur Blank said, listen, if it gets bad. If it gets really bad. Okay, then right we're, now. Two games below 500, that's all right. This makes me question the ownership. That's honestly. weird. This makes us like... Very weird. Yeah, he are um what? Yeah, something's happened there where. Or he's being bullied because Arthur Smith seems like someone who. Wait, who does um who does uh who uh what company does um Arthur Smith's dad own again? Oh right, he's like super rich. FedEx or something like that, right? Uh, I forgot, but I I remember that story. That's that's some of that money is hey yeah don't fire my son. Yep. Yep. Because it's such a random report. Why report that in week fifteen? Probably because we all hate him. Yeah, we do. Um. (laughs) <laughs> right after signing a three-year, $36 million, million dollar deal, Graham P- Delpit is going on the injury reserve. Uh, I know. Um, sucks, dude. Sucks for him. Glad he got paid. Yeah. Um, in the bigger paid. picture here, Brown started taking some hits now. Offensive line banged up. As if now he started Obviously, we hits. know about – I know, right? Yeah. Um, we know about Watson and Chubb. Those are the big ones. But offensive line now banged up. And their defense, which is has been the consistent thing throughout the years, now banged up. And some major holes. Grant Delpit was playing the best ball of his career. Yeah, and it paid, and it you know, showed because he got paid. Was he gonna be free agent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he would have so, got paid in the open. I market. think this is was his first deal too. Good he, for him. he had been in, with the Browns for a while, and he finally. I mean, four four weeks, so he could be back for the playoffs. Yeah, if they make the playoffs, we'll get into that later. 
Uh, this is interesting. The Titans will wear the Houston Oilers throwback uniforms against the Houston Texans. Take that, Houston. Both Di- of you. Didn't they give them a cease and desist last time they wore it? To good for you guys. You know what? Screw you guys. We're going to wear it anyway. You got to love Mike Vrabel. They're man. so good. The uniforms are like, the, besides. They're fantastic. Besides the uniforms. Kelly Green Eagles. Yeah, name yours right now. I'm the Seahawks. Those ones are freaking good. Those are good. so nice. There's another one I'm missing, too. You like the Giants ones, don't you? Oh, the old school Giants with the with yeah. the word Giants yep. on it? Yeah, that those was cool. cool. But these were cool, though. Oh, and then the so creamsicle nice. that you don't like, I'm a big fan of those creamsicles. They're growing on me. They're okay. growing on me. Maybe, maybe, maybe I think the Bucks but suck. But those Houston Oilers or you know, whatever, those are They're amazing. sick. They're I would, so good. Why the don't red? the Broncos wear their old school creamsicle type ones? I don't know. I don't know. They're we, so nice. We have so many old variations of jerseys that we just don't wear. Hmm. I don't know. That just hit me. Come on, Walmart. Yep. Um. Yeah, I think that's all I got. Oh no! Well, last thing here. Sorry, I thought I have that it. Um, the last thing here. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco. I didn't know he underwent shoulder surgery. Yeah, but he could be next week, right? And yeah, could be back next week. It was uh, quote just a cleanup. Yeah. Um. I, the only reason I want to bring this up is because keep an eye on that. If real football wise, playoff wise, obviously that you're screwed if because he's been a very good back. Fantasy for you. football, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I got to differentiate yeah. that. Fantasy playoff football. Uh, you're screwed because he's been so consistent. And that's really the name of game at the running back position this year. Um, real football, they really need him. Yeah, he's a big part of their offense. They really need him. Not like their offense has been smooth the whole year. Like, like anyways, he's one of the few pieces that's always the right. same. He's catching the ball this year. Yeah. He, this he pass blocks even if it kills him. <laughs> now we're forced to see CEH try oh. to uh, uh, he's so bad. be a good running back. What a man. He's what a, so bad. I drafted him number one overall in our mm-hmm. dynasty draft. What, 20, what, 18 or 19, Rookie whatever year, it was? Yeah. And not your fault. A lot of people would have. You saw him at LSU during the championship game. Like, oh, this guy's going to be freaking phenomenal. And the Chiefs, that's when the Chiefs were just coming on. Yeah, so. Uh, but CEH and McKinnon have to split it. I would take McKinnon in fantasy just because he gets catches, but it's not really safe either way. Yeah, I'm not too excited either yeah. way, but yeah. yeah, McKinnon would be the guy. Okay, that's the news. Okay, every Friday... We ask questions that can only be answered on the field on Sunday, and uh, it's kind of what we want to see coming out this week, looking at uh, Week 15's schedule of games. I'll get us started. Is that okay? One day you say no. It'd be really funny. Uh, no, it's not okay. No. Oh, okay. No, I'm first. Shut up. Can Trevor <laughs> <laughs> Can Trevor Lawrence carry the Jags in his what in what is going to feel like a playoff football game? Oh, boy. Against who? Against the Ravens, oh. Jaguars at home against the Ravens, um, and it's really all on the line for them now. They have four games remaining. Um, the the Colts and the Texans are nipping at their heels in the AFC South. You don't want to fall into the pack of wild card teams because then it's just shuffle and deal. And you got the Bills and Broncos coming hard at that. Yeah, um, you you got to win this game, and then that'll give you a really good chance to really finish out this year strong. Bucks, Panthers, and Titans after this. Yeah, this is such, for a team that needs to win, what a terrible team to play when you need to win. The Ravens yeah. are one of the best teams in football. They were number two on my on my power rankings because they're very freaking good. They're very good. Um, and it's going to be on Trevor Lawrence because the defense, I think you mentioned this in the top ten uh, list on Wednesday. If you don't watch that show, go watch that. Top ten was very, very fun this week. But it was in that top ten list, um, you mentioned that their defense isn't getting turnovers, and that's really their calling card. They're giving up a ton of yards all all year. They were just bend, don't break defense, and now they're breaking often. Yeah, I think now we need to see that Trevor Lawrence that we were promised, the yep. superstar, the best prospect since Manning or, you know, yeah, whatever. And unfortunately, we're going to get – we're going to need that but get a very banged-up version of Trevor Lawrence just a week or two weeks now uh, since the high ankle sprain, which usually – I mean, some guys have missed six weeks for that. He's he's, a, he's playing right through it, which – Props he, to you, but tough. I, I'm not sure if this is best for him. Yeah, I know it's not, I'm sure it's not best for him. Or what but kind of for uh, the Jaguars? What kind of shots he's getting in the ankle? That boy's getting a, direct no, bone no, shots. What's there's a there's a shot above Epidural? above the butt that Epidural? really gets yeah. He probably get yeah. one right right in the main vein. Oof. Well, I think if you do that one, you can't walk. We can't walk anyway. But yeah, maybe this like we're, this is like a two negatives make a positive. Like two negatives make <laughs> make a positive. We're doctors here, obviously. Yes. Um, Extensive medical research. Christian Kirk, of course, is out. Um, ETN, if he plays, will be playing with hurt ribs. I didn't – I think he's going to play. And then the Jags are 2-4 and at home. They have not been any better at home. 
Yeah, that's um, weird. It hasn't really been a home field advantage for them. <clears throat> and then in come the Ravens, like you said. Number two ranked overall defense. Um, Trevor Lawrence really has a prove-it game if he's ever having in his career. This Sunday against the Ravens. Yeah. Uh, I really for I really hope he does. Me too. But if he doesn't, I'm going to start to question, like, I don't know if this guy has it, it. Right. Because they need him to be something more than he is right now. Yes. Yeah. What you got? Uh, for Friday's question, Sunday's answers. Can the Lions uh, get back on track and beat the Denver Broncos? Um, this is a big game for the Lions. One, because it's on primetime, so everyone's going to watch. And two, people starting to doubt the freaking Lions. Then you have the Broncos yeah, coming in. I won't say a lot about the Broncos. You guys know I'm a big fan. You know, whatever. Uh, we're, we're at a point with this Lions team where we're trying to figure out, like, are you guys actually this good? Because you're not. You have that great record, and, you you know, yeah. you guys have. But I've seen you kind of blow a lot of big games, the Packers mainly, then last week against uh, uh, yeah, against the Justin Fields-led, you know, uh, uh, Bears. I don't really know if I believe in this team. They need – this is – this is their game. It's in prime time Saturday night, right before the freaking playoffs. The Broncos need a win, so you're, you're gonna get the best out of Denver. Bro, yeah, Broncos are playing Broncos, the best in a playoff yeah, spot. We Broncos need to win. I say we. The Broncos need to win. Uh, you need to figure out if you're gonna sign Jared Goff long term because yeah, it hasn't happened yet. They said it for two years. Oh, we're, oh, we love Jared. We're gonna sign him long term. Da, 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 da. Landon Hooker. Uh, no, look, you can talk all you want, but money, but money talks the loudest, and you have yeah. not given this guy. Anything yet. Exactly. So, look, I know Lions fans think or don't want to hear this, but Jared Goff is also playing for a contract, and Jared Goff might not be a quarterback if he can't. Look, two years, if they don't, you know, if he makes the playoffs this year, that's great. They've made it since, like, the 60s or whatever the hell. Um, This is, I can't wait for this game. Also, I'm a Bronco fan, so I will be cheering against them. But still, I want to see Dan Campbell on this team that, remember Dan Campbell came in the, came in the league just as a joke. People were laughing at his yeah. first quote, like, Buy people's kneecaps off, and then all of a sudden now they're one of the best records in football. But they're trying to question when they're when they're bad, they're bad. That's what you don't want to see. And they're starting to do this thing where they play to their competition, which is a sign you don't want to see. Um, when they scored, what was it, two weeks ago against uh, the Saints, they scored three touchdowns quick. They didn't let that, that lead come back because that defense is not playing well. Like you said earlier, they need another playmaker. Gardner Johnson coming back hopefully next week or the, or, or, or the week after. Um, this this is a Lions get-back game. Also, uh, we talked about this last week. You have to prove to yourselves that you can keep up with a good team. I'm not saying the Broncos are some great team, but you also have to compete with the Niners, the Eagles, who can score, and the Cowboys can score pretty well. Defense sucks. Your offense needs to get better. <laughs> Such a big, great game. Yeah, they got the NFC North pretty much. I mean, if they, it would take a massive collapse to lose that. Yeah. Now, because the Vikings are fading fast, and the Packers lost a big one. Yeah, Packers as well, and then and then the Bears just too too far gone at this point. Um, and even the, the number one overall seed, I think you lost that maybe last week when you didn't keep up with the ten and three pack. Yeah. Um. So this is really proving stuff to yourself. This is how do you want to enter the playoffs? Yeah. Uh, playing your best ball or uh, like you have been the last couple of weeks, playing your worst ball. Yeah. Um, they need to figure out this defense. Ben Johnson hasn't been great either um, from what I've read. I don't know. I, I don't want to join in on that because I don't know if that's true. But I know th- this is what that does tell me. People are really starting to point fingers like all around. Aaron Glenn, Ben Johnson, Jared Goff, the defense, Aiden Hutchinson. Like everyone's pointing fingers. Oh, I'm not playing on it. On it's just not. I'm saying you, but I'm yeah, saying yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're so. looking for answers because they they don't know how to stop the bleeding, and um, I mean a good way to do it is just winning because winning I mean, winning covers so many sins. They do not have an easy schedule going out. So the Broncos this week. Yeah. Uh, Vikings. They're you know it's tough though. The Cowboys lost, and then the Vikings again. Yeah, and those parts split that. So Vikings divisional series. games always you never know. And then the Cowboys, we just saw what they can do, what they're capable of doing. And this week the Broncos, they're they're no pushover either. Six and one in the last seven games. Yeah. Uh yeah, I can't this is gonna be a fun one. This is gonna be like this is a great night cap to those Saturday games. Game. Yeah, it's a playoff game for both teams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I got one here. Uh can the Eagles win out and take back the number one spot in the NFC? Because the only way they'll have a shot at that anymore um is to win out because the Niners and Cowboys now have um, the lead over them as far as the tiebreakers are concerned, and one more loss, and they're pretty. They can kiss the the uh, the home field advantage 
goodbye. We're and Eagles. I don't mind going to Dallas as as an Eagle fan. Um, I don't want to go to Santa Clara. No. no. I do, don't want to go to San Francisco nope. Nope. and play the best team in football at home. Um, you don't want that. So they need to fight like dogs here. They have a, the easy, statistically the easiest schedule remaining. They have the Seahawks this week and then Giants, Cardinals, Giants. So three games at the end you should win. Um, Seahawks tomorrow playing without Devin Witherspoon, playing without Jamal Adams, and playing with a really, really banged up Geno Smith. Yeah. So you should win tomorrow. Um, you should be able to kind of right the ship a little bit, get back on track. A defense that's been giving up a lot of points. Yeah. And um, and kind of fix some things that have been lagging here the last couple of uh, last couple of weeks. Um, I don't know if you're going to um, beat the if you're going to catch the Cowboys Niners. I think the Cowboys here have a stinker coming up because uh, that's just a very Cowboys thing to do. Whoa, um, shots fired. I what? know the Niners are playing the Ravens in a couple weeks, so you're going to become a huge Ravens fan if yeah. you're the Eagles. Let's go Lamar. And uh, but to even have a chance though, you got to win out. You got to finish the the season. Think about that. To have a chance at number one overall seed, you got to finish the season fourteen and three. Which is crazy. It's crazy. Fourteen and three is a phenomenal record, and it's fourteen is a phenomenal record, and it's you're not guaranteed at all that you're going to get the number one seed. Yeah, yeah. Tough. Uh, Eagles have such a problem here where they have to <coughs> fix it against a good team, and then also keep winning while you're fixing it. Yeah, winning solves a lot of problems, but like <clears throat> this is tough. And also, stop turning the ball over. That'll yeah. fix it. That that's whatever yeah. you see them play is like one of the um. One of the, what uh, I don't want to say it. One of the, like fatal, steps. One of the steps that people take toward, um, a firing or something bad happening. In the organization happened this week for the Eagles, and it kind of scared me. Like, oh, we're there, and that is when a coach has to come out and publicly say that he's not going to fire a co- another coach or he's not going to take play calling away from another coach. When that happens, then you know, okay, the noise is inside the building now. Like and he had to do that this week about um, offensive coordinator Brian Johnson, which is being which is funny because he's being mentioned for uh, head coaching opportunities. But he had to come out this week and say, "I am not changing from Brian Johnson as the offensive coordinator." Um, and to know that that noise is in the building now is like, uh, do you like Brian Johnson? It's not good. I personally no. I, I think oh. he's very a very basic play caller. Okay, like uh, a little, we, we a can get into that, but a little Madden playbook uh, play caller. Yeah, he's just very. Just very, Four verticals. Very vanilla, yeah. Very yeah. vanilla. Um, nothing really easy for Jalen. If you watch Eagle games, you'll know. Because Jalen's just sitting back there, just looking 40 yards down the field, hoping something comes open. Um, but, yeah, Eagles need to win win out to uh, have a chance at number one of seed. They haven't, beat the, they haven't beaten the Seahawks in 15 years. So we'll see. Fun game. <laughs> uh, for, for my last one, uh, can the Bills beat the Cowboys and prove to the world that, that they're back? Look, we caught it last week. The Bills are coming back. Now... Talk about a game where you can finally cement yourself into everyone's eyes, and more importantly, your eyes. You have a against the Cowboys in Buffalo. Yeah, uh, coming off that big win against Kansas City, where the where Mahomes bitched a moan after. <laughs> they are firmly they are seventy six and firmly in that in in that AFC AFC playoff race. There are seventy six, uh, and also there are six other teams in the AFC who are also seven and six. So they have to somehow win out. Well, yeah, kind of the same thing as a. As uh, as Philly. So since the the Bills lost that, you know the the crazy Buffalo uh, uh, Broncos game, Josh Allen has been six touchdowns, three picks, throwing seventy five, seventy five percent. Yeah, uh, I think he's hot. I think he's back. I, ever since they fired, I'm blanking on the coordinator's name. That Ken Dorsey. Yeah, Ken. Ever since they they uh they uh fired him, Joe Brady has come in here and just fix. I'm not fixed. Help guide Josh Allen because he's always a great quarterback, but guide him into a better direction where he's playing smart, smart football. Yeah, the Bills are playing really good football right now. They almost beat the Eagles. They beat the Chiefs. Is the it? Bills? Yeah, right. Yeah, last week. Yeah, yeah duh. Yeah. Um, and they're just doing. He's doing something that we've always um, known that Josh Allen need, needs. That's pulling the reins back a little bit. Yeah. Get, he's checking down more than he's ever checked down before. Right now, look at he's James just Cook's feeding numbers. James Cook. Yeah. yeah. Um, Savon Diggs didn't get the ball as much anymore, but the offense is effective. I'm sure there's some, there's the, some, what's it called? Passive aggressive tweet about that. Yeah. From Stephon um, Diggs but Josh Allen's actually very good at a slow, monotonous offense because of his running ability yeah. and because of just playmaking ability. He, yeah. he can get you three or four yards in so many different ways and convert, you know, a third, third and four or third and five. Um, and they just been, they've been really good on offense. Um, I, I think Josh Allen needs more talk about the MVP. That's crazy that he's kind of had the 
a very wild season where people were out. I was out on him. And all of a sudden, he crawled from the depths of, I think they were only 500, and we just called them out. He leads like, the league in turnovers, and that's what everyone gets on about. There's literally not another thing that you get on about. Yeah. But it's a big thing, turnovers. I mean, um, But it's because the entire offense goes through him. Like, literally the whole offense. The running game, yeah, the passing game, everything goes through him. I mean, James Cook is good, but he's their best goal linebacker for sure. Yeah. And then he operates that offense throwing-wise. He just slings the ball over the place. Um, yeah, he's 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 such a weird guy to like because you're, like, you're trying to think, like, what's his memorable game? His best, most memorable game right now is losing to the Chiefs in overtime. Yeah. So he needs some kind of the poor Buffalo. They have, they have, they have one of the best quarterbacks that, they, that they've ever had and never won anything with them. I just feel bad for Josh Allen. Uh, I get on him pretty harshly. People get on him pretty harshly. He hasn't won anything, but he, he has such incredible usage. Like I, I just people don't you don't understand football if all you look at is tur- are, is his turnover stats and that's the only thing you have and that's why you you dump on this guy. There are th- what twenty eight teams that would take him right now as their quarterback. Twenty seven, maybe, maybe like, yeah. He's 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 one of the best quarterbacks in this league. Yeah, and he turns the ball over because he has to make every single play, yeah. every single decision for this team. And um, really interesting. Uh, you know, I, I saw this stat and I brought it up because I knew this would be one of your points. Nobody in the NFL has more touchdowns and turnovers than Josh Allen, and nobody has more pressures in the NFL than Micah Parsons. And they meet they meet in this game on Sunday. And you know there's going to be some trash talk. Because Josh Allen yeah. is a country boy who likes a tra- uh, trash talk. Jo- this is what I love about Josh Allen. There's going to be a point where Micah Parsons is going to be right in his face, and Josh Allen isn't going to run. He isn't going to go down. He's probably bigger than Micah Parsons. He's probably going to try to stiff arm him. Yeah. And still throw the ball. I love Josh Allen. He was my. He fits so well in Buffalo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just um, a crazy white boy. But this game, like, this game is so, I can't wait. Like, this is. Yeah, awesome. If we had a game of the week, if and if Denver wasn't playing, I would call this game of the week. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you what. Back-to-back wins, if the Cowboys pull us off, Eagles-Bills, I start thinking about the Cowboys a little different. Like, whoa, you just beat the Eagles and Bills back-to-back. Yeah. That's impressive. Like that's, yeah, that's we, very impressive. It's pretty. It's also pretty big of you to be a little to throw them a little bone. I mean, it's true. Like I also know we have year. a lot of Cowboys. <laughs> Cowboys fans are very good this year. Uh, last week's win was very, very impressive, and I, I have the Bills beating this game, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's a blowout because the Cowboys now we can see oh when they're really good against a good team, watch out, dude. Yeah, I mean yeah. Dak. Can do amazing things for his MVP. Um, like people take him seriously as an MVP candidate yeah, yeah. in this game. Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, so that's Friday's question, Sunday's answers. It's. I mean, those are some monster games. Yeah, so oh. excited for that. Now yeah. all that starts uh, tomorrow or today if you're watching this on Saturday. Yes. Um, okay, we have. Um, we're gonna get into a little fantasy football here as we um, start to wind the show down. Dun, the show. Dun, dun. Yeah, the show down. Um, fantasy football, of course, playoffs start this week, and so. Regular season is wrapped up, and we have some awards to give out um, for the uh, regular season guys who just uh, blew our minds. Yeah. Uh, do you have music, or are we just going to go for it? Yeah, we have some music. Okay, here we go. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, let's start with, uh, let's do MVP last. Okay, okay. sure. For sure. Um, let's do comeback player of the war- uh, year, and then we'll do rookie. Okay. So what you got, comeback player of the year? Uh, comeback player of the year is a player who... He's missed five games last year. Well, six games because he started one. Then, he, then, then he he uh, I didn't finish. At one point, was the face of fantasy football. Was the face of wow, he was all exciting. over. He was all over every fantasy football cover article, whatever. Now he's quarterback four, being drafted. He's the fourth quarterback taken. His name's Lamar Jackson. Oh, duh. Lamar yeah. Jackson on the year, sixteen touchdowns, yeah. uh, throwing with five rushing touchdowns. Uh, QB four uh, on the season with seven top ten quarterback quarterback that's awesome uh, finishes taken behind Mahomes, Hurts, and and Josh Allen, uh, phenomenal. Yeah. Also, you could have gotten him in the third round. He was his ADP was thirty two. Um, that's phenomenal. Uh, also, if look, running quarterbacks are the uh, the epitome of fans. Uh, like, well, not the epitome. They're like. They're the ultimate cheat code in fantasy football. Yeah. Okay. And he was taken behind three good ones. He's just the he's just the last one taken in that little group of uh, of uh, uh, quarterbacks, and he's probably on every playoff fantasy roster right now. So good. He the offense, much like Josh Allen, runs exactly all through him. I think the least amount of carries he had in one game was five. 
He just they utilize him. I know they say that we're gonna pass more. He still runs the ball well enough. He had four rushing touchdowns or five. I'm sorry. Uh, he's my comeback player player of uh, of the year. And it, in the last three years, he's missed 12 games. So he kind of already didn't think he was the same. He should have been picked over Mahomes very easily this year. That oh, looks kind of dumb. I'm sure, Mahomes owners would say that. In an yeah, yeah. Uh, Hertz is phenomenal. He's number one quarterback. But yeah. to get him in the th- as the fourth quarterback taken and to be in the same as the f- as the first three, yep. that's phenomenal. Big time. That probably allowed you to pick, um, you know, a, a Brees Hall or a, you know someone like that. Um, well, I mean, not Brees Hall, but maybe no, like, that he's the ultimate zero running back because you want two yeah, wideouts. Like you're able to maybe get like a yeah, have no problem getting that second wideout. Type or maybe two. that third wide out. Yeah. Or maybe that tight end. You know, wide receiver, wide receiver, tight end. And I could wait on a quarterback. I don't want to take Hurts or Allen. I'm going to take Lamar Jackson. Who's going to be the same as that. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's go to my uh, rookie of the year. And my rookie of the year, I mean, once you look at it, it's it's clear and obvious. It's CJ Stroud. It's Chester James Stroud. And that has That's to, his name? No, I just made that up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Cordarius Joseph. <clears throat> yeah, Stroud. It's Clarence John Stroud, and he's been he's been fantastic all year, and uh, I mean right, currently he's quarterback seven, a rookie quarterback, quarterback seven, twelfth overall, so twelfth overall as far as scoring in in fantasy football. He was drafted overall uh, in PPR leagues two hundred and third. That is good for the sixteenth round in, 12, in twelve people, a twelve person league. So there's if, some dodo. So if you just totally punted no, on quarterback, there's some dodo who drafted Daniel Jones over this guy. I'm, I'm. Sh- I haven't looked at ADP, but I guarantee you, Daniel Jones was yeah. drafted before. Shout out to Daniel Jones. Um, and here's CJ Stroud. Uh, he was drafted 24th. There's 24th uh, quarterback overall. Yeah. So 24 quarterbacks in. So people, most teams drafted their starter and their backup before looking at Stroud. I mean, I know, I know we're making fun of those people, but I mean, we didn't draft him this high he, to, to do this as, as a rookie, rookie quarterback. Yeah. Phenomenal, and also he's not a huge runner, so he's doing this all with his arm. All with his arm, uh, six quarterback fit, quarterback one finishes. Um, only one time was he not at least a quarterback two, and that was last week because he got hurt. Yeah, so he his floor Phenomenal. has been incredibly high. Yeah, and that's because he doesn't throw a lot of interceptions. Uh, if you take out the one three interception game, he has he has two interceptions for the entire year. Um, two, uh, he has he has two one interception games, one three interception game. He's been so just. Uh, his his sexiness appeal, fantasy wise, next year is going oh, to be off through the, the roof. Yeah. yeah, he's going to be next year. He's going to be drafted. I mean, above Burrow probably next year. You think so? Yeah, probably around that yeah, range. Yeah, around right, after that. after the run after the, the you know Allen hurts. Yeah, Lamar Jackson will be there next year. Um, would be interesting to see if people draft him before or after Mahomes. Mahomes, yeah, that'll be interesting. Interesting. Mahomes, but, Burrow, Stroud next year. At this point, what order are you taking them in? Mahomes, Burrow, Stroud. I'll take Mahomes. Uh huh. And then I'll take Stroud. And then I'll take Burrow. That's amazing that he's in that category. Yeah. Right? It's crazy. Uh, so, yeah. So, he's my rookie of the year. Um, CJ, Stroud, Charles, Jameson, Stroud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many names. I want to know his name for. Actually, you know what? No. I don't ever want to know his name. We're, we're, where's it make it up? Yeah. Clarence Jr. Who needs facts? Yeah. Okay. Am I giving MVP right now or you want to give yours? Uh, Let me give. Let's take a break real quick. Let's take a quick break. And then we're going to come back and give... With the big dogs, the yep. big awards. Let's the big it. awards, the uh, sleeper of the year. Oh, this one is a league winner yep. of the year. Yep. And then, of course, the most valuable player for the fantasy football season. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back here with the fantasy football awards for the 2023 season. Of course, the season is wrapped up, and we are in the uh, in the playoffs now. I hope you're in the playoffs now. Yeah, if you um, <laughs> if you're listening to this part and you haven't made the playoffs, God bless you because I would not yeah. want to talk about fantasy football if I did not make the playoffs. Yeah, but stick around though. There's still fun. Yeah, stuff please stick do. around. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's uh, tough. Yeah, so let's get into it here. We already we already shared the comeback player of the year and the uh, rookie of the year. That was Lamar Jackson uh, as the comeback player of the year, and then CJ Stroud as the rookie of the year. Both of them tearing it up. Uh, let's get into now the sleeper of the year, and then you'll finish up with the most valuable player. The sleeper of the year for the 2023 uh, fantasy football season is Raheem Mostert, God. running back from the Miami Dolphins. God, this guy. Right now, overall, uh, he is the 17th player in fantasy football and the RB2. It's insane. That's insane. <sighs> Raheem Mostert. This guy, 
has been on waiver, uh, not waivers. This guy's been on the free agent list on your fantasy football league for the last three years. Yep. No one's wanting for three. Like, this is almost a like Cordero Patterson situation. Yeah, he's just a backup in San Fran. Oh, you get, <coughs> you get traded, but they're going to get Jalen Taylor. That's they got Jeff the Wilson. Yeah. Oh, Jalen like, Taylor. They're going to go Dalvin Cook. Like, and then have you seen this Devin A-Chain guy or A-Chain, A-Chain whatever his really name is? Fast. Um, yeah. And yet, nope, didn't need any of them because the RB2 was already there. Um, two times was he, wasn't at least an RB2 on the year. That means the top 24 running backs. Um, so that's incredible floor. Like, he lets you down twice, and uh, that's it. I mean, we're 15. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, he has not missed a game. You, this is the production that you wanted from a Nick Chubb, Saquon Barkley. Yeah, you didn't get it from them because of injury or whatever reason. What a steal! What an absolute. Yeah, well, steal. I mean, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, he hasn't missed a game, Good. and is doing this without catches. Six catches in the last six games. <laughs> uh, to your point, he was the forty-first running back picked overall. Oh my god! Don't even tell me the okay. names. So, um, you mentioned some of them: Nick Chubb, Barkley, Josh Jacobs. Uh, I even throw Derek Henry. No, Derek Henry's been okay. Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler. Not um, great. These guys were all taken in the first or second round. Yep. Right? And you were looking for an RB2 type player. Yep. Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor. Same thing. You picked about 38 running backs too too early. Crazy. You should have waited until the, what is this, the ninth round and taken Raheem Mostert. Kind of pissed me off, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Raheem. This is, I mean, you've been, you've been, whenever we talk fantasy, you pound the table for one thing, and that is the zero RB strategy. Yeah, you will. You it's, it's what you're all about, and this is there's no greater example. Example. Yeah, he is the he is the he is one of the pillars of that whole argument. Is yeah. this year? It costs hey, you well, nothing. Yeah, it, it, curious to see what they do next year with him. But this year, if you have him, yeah, people probably still don't even respect it because they probably see, oh, it's just it's just Raheem Moster. Yeah, go look his numbers, buddy. Yeah, He's pretty good. It paid me of a sleeper. Uh, Raheem Mostert, if he's on your team, you're probably um, have a very good team going into the playoffs. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's get to that most valuable player for the 2023 Fantasy Football League year season. Wide receiver Tyreek Hill. Wow. Not Christian McCaffrey. No, not Christian McCaffrey. The highest scoring player in fantasy football over his CMC, over Josh, Amazing. Hill, over Jalen Hurts on the year. There's still games left. 97 catches, 1,500 yards, and 12 touchdowns. That's most people's career seasons. Uh, in PPR, no single-digit games the whole season. That's wild. Zero. Averages 24 points per game in PPR. 21 in half in half PPR. Nine times he was a top-five wideout. Nine eight time, times. Eight times he's had eight or more catches. What more do you want from a wideout one besides... He's good in PPR. He's good. He's good. He's good uh, out of PPR. He's consistent. He's a star. He's the main focus of of his team. He's just a, he's just the MVP. If you don't agree with me, then you're just wrong. I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. I'm. I mean, there's no other way around. We were we were saying this before the year that it wasn't Justin Jefferson. It wasn't AJ Brown. It wasn't Jabbar Chase. God. Yeah. Um. It wasn't anyone else. It was Tyreek Hill. And yep. if you had the number one and number two overall pick, because that was the big thing. Like. Well, who do I take a number one over two overall? I'd rather have the three or four. Yeah. Like, no, take Tyreek Hill. Yep. Like, he was saying, I'm going to put up 2,000 yards, and I believed him because last year he put up 1,800 yards. Yep. Um, and so this it's not terribly surprising to, to me or you, but I'm so happy other people are, like, seeing, like, hey, this guy is, like, legit. And I wouldn't doubt next year if he does similar numbers to, like, this He's going to be 30, and I don't think it'll matter. Yeah, I think he's – that speed will carry on a long while. And <laughs> this offense is literally based around him. Now it they, is, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they designed things to get him the ball as fast as possible. Jalen Waddle was pretty much obsolete. And yeah. he was being drafted like... That's a first-round uh, talent. That's yeah. a first-round wideout. Yeah. yeah. He was being drafted probably, I haven't checked, but I'd guess no later than like the fourth, fifth round. Yeah. And he's he's been a massive bust because Tyreek Hill is just eating up everything there. Yeah, his, his uh, uh, Hill's ADP was five, so it's not like anyone missed out. But you probably draft... I There's some guys who drafted Cooper Cup over him. Some guys who drafted... You know, uh, you know, whatever, Saquon Barkley or Jonathan Taylor, whatever, whatever. Uh, Tyreek Hill is phenomenal. Uh, my MVP, your MVP, the league's MVP, uh, and fans for MVP. Yep, so quick recap here. That is the MVP, uh, Tyreek Hill, wide receiver from the uh, Miami Dolphins. Uh, comeback player of the year, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Good Jackson. Good back. Yep. Um, the rookie of the year, C.J. Stroud. That is um, the quarterback. Corey. Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. Stroud. Jedediah. There it is. Yeah. 
Um, and then the uh, sleeper of the year is Raheem Mostert. Uh, congrats, congrats, guys. Uh, check your mailboxes. Yeah, we're sending sending you something nice. Yeah. Check them um, every. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more fantasy here, and then get into our picks uh, for the week. And uh, when we started this podcast, obviously this season, we started alongside with it because we love fantasy football, a fantasy football league, and we call it the Bench Warmers Fantasy Football League. And we are starting the first round of the playoffs uh, in that league, and we want to look at the matchups and talk a little fantasy. And uh, obviously, none of you are in this league, most likely. Maybe, you know, some of you are, but yeah. most likely you're not. Yeah. Um, so we want to talk a little fantasy as far as, like, across the landscape. We're going to bring up some players that might be in your league, yep. might be on your team. So let's get into it. Uh, we're going to start with the first matchup here, and that's Tits McGee taking on Zeke who. Um, Tits are... McGee happens to be your um, your boy, your best friend, uh, Daniel. Yep. <laughs> that's my boy. Yep. Uh, and Zeke who happens to be our brother. Now, I know what you're thinking. The Bench Warmers League is not all our people. No, it's just he's it. just happens that these two are, and they're playing each other. Yep. Um, let's do this. Let's break down each of their teams, and then let's break down this matchup as far as like who we think has the advantage. So okay? let's let's lay out the format of this league. We have to do that for us. It's a two quarterback PPR with My a double favorite. flex, Ugh. no kicker, no defense, because that is that shit's boring. We yes. don't do that. Uh, so no super flex, a. a uh, double flex, so wide out, running back, tight end. Yeah. And then uh, two quarterback league. Very good. Uh, let's start with Daniel's team, Tits McGee. Um, he ha- and I'll put this on the on the screen as well. All class. It. Yeah, very classy gentleman. Um, he has at his quarterback two guys that I would not think would be on a uh, playoff team, and yet yeah, at, they least, are. at least with one of them, you feel really good. Purdy taking on the Cardinals. I feel I, he's playing Jalen Hurts, and I feel confident he's going to match Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Um, Purdy there is going to be, is I think he's going to give him a strong game. Um, but the quarterback too is the fun one, and it's the epitome of the 2023 uh, season, and that's Joe uh, Joseph, if you will, Flacco. Joseph Flacco back at it. Good for you, Joe, man. It, what a fun. Good for you, buddy. And I tell you what, Flacco against the um, Bears, not the greatest matchup, but it gets much much stupider. You could be starting <laughs> Easton Stick. I mean, look. Last the last two weeks, Joe Flacco seventeen points, twenty one points in our league. Yeah, that's quarterback two, quarterback one yeah. numbers there. So yeah, I like it. Let's look at his uh, his running backs here, and he uh, he has one in, actually in the uh, flex as well. So we'll look at that too. But he's going to start Etienne and Mixon at his um, RB one, RB two, solid, solid. Etienne's hurt, but yeah, I think he's going to be very solid. I think Mixon had a big game last week. Mixon looks great this year. Yeah, he's and, very, he's very and it looks like Browning's very willing to dump it off to him too. Yep. yep. Um, so I think. Strong game with those. ETN is playing Baltimore. That might be a problem. Um, so that, you know, I'd be a little worried about that. Mixing against Minnesota, smash play. Uh, CeeDee Lamb, he's he's on a tear because Dak Prescott's on a tear. Strong. And to pair him with <coughs> Stephon Diggs, that's an incredible job of drafting. I mean, Diggs is the number uh, two wideout on yeah. the year. So pretty yeah. good. Um, his wide receiver is definitely the strength of his team here. Uh, and Joku has really come on flat with uh, with Flacco. Yeah, he, that's a league winner type tight end. Snuck in the uh, yeah. old Joe Flacco, uh, <laughs> David uh, and Joku stack. Yep, that yep. legendary <laughs> stack. I didn't. God, where are we? The Flacco and Joku stack. Yeah, riding it to the playoffs. Yep, here we go. Um, and I love that he's balanced his team here with with some age and a little bit of youth here. And yeah. Puka Nakua. Puka Nakua, the best name in football this year. Puka Nakua. Puka there Nakua. At, at his flex. The Puka. Um, and then a chain. At the uh, at the other flex there, I'd be a little worried about a chain. The Jets, is tough. Uh, but let's look at his bench here um, because he had he had some tough breaks. Number one tough break, they don't know how to have a, they don't know how to um, draft a quarterback in Pittsburgh, and so he can't play Pickens. Pickens should be your flex here, and you can't because you don't trust the quarterback. And um, the other big bummer though is Jonathan Taylor. If he had Jonathan Taylor on this team. And he's able to start that's him. That's the wrong team. Do I, do I have the wrong bench yeah, for him? that's my team. I was going to say he's stocked. Okay, so I have his bench right here. Here we go. Um, I, I changed my mind. His bench really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I don't know if his bench is very good. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, but it does have to suck to see Josh Palmer sitting there with 21 on your bench. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean. Would you have played Josh Palmer? No. I don't have the cojones. Against the Raiders? Because it was the, it was Easton Stick still. Easton Stick. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but A-Chain, yeah, I guess that's a tough pick here. Uh, he gets screwed that Zach Charbon never turned into, turned into anything. I don't know if he drafted him or picked him up midway, but um, I'm sure that was when he was hoping that, like, maybe he'll pop at some point. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure why he has Bethard on his roster. That's a total waste of space. Uh, but Bailey Zappi. <laughs> yeah, Zappi. Zappi, Zappi, Zappi. And then Justin Watson. I haven't seen him on a lot of rosters. 
<laughs> so that, good that, for Justin Watson. That deep sleeper. Yeah. Uh, let's jump over here to uh, David's team. Uh, Zeke who? Apparently, I know he's a Cowboys fan, so it's a very bitter Cowboys Zeke fan. Zeke who? Uh, I mean, he has Pollard on his net. That's This why. Cowboy fan starts off his roster with uh, Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts. Um, very obviously. good. Yeah. yeah, very good. Jordan Love is Jordan. a pivotal player for him because he is so – he's all over the place. Okay. I trade him Jordan Love. I want you to tell me if it's fair yep. or if it's even. It was Jordan Love for Michael Pittman. Not even close. Uh, I don't think you know Pittman. But, yeah, but yeah, yeah maybe. You think I know Pittman. He's fourth in the league in catches. That's all you need to know. Oh, so you think that I won? Yes. Okay, cool. cool, cool, cool. Absolutely. Okay, I thought you said he won. Is that what you told me that? So, so we can no. Tell. Jordan Love's been good, too, though. You you know, you annihilated him in that trade. Pittman? Jordan Love's the, uh, number nine, the number nine quarterback right now. Averaging 18 points per game. Good job, Dave. Yeah, you really you really won that trade, Dave. Uh, okay, his running backs here. Tony Pollard has been underwhelming, obviously. And Ken Walker has um, been uh, good when he plays. Yep. Unfortunately, he's playing the Eagles, which before two weeks ago was the number one team against the run. Yep. Um, I think they go back to a form of that, and it might be a rough game there for Ken Walker. And with Pollard, I just don't, I don't love his running backs. But no, no I don't love him either. I know he has Kamara and Warren in his flexes, so I like yeah. that. Yeah, uh, I like his flex running backs much more than I like his starters. But he's off to a great start with Devontae Adams already. Not to jump ahead of you here. Yeah, Devontae Adams gave him a, gave him a great start. Um, 24 points. Pairing him with Drake London isn't ideal, especially when you're going against Stephon Diggs and CeeDee Lamb. Yeah. Because I, I think at least one of those guys will match Devontae Adams' uh, start here. Let's look at his bench real quick and I make sure I look at the right one this time. Um, yeah, he is a whole, whole stack, stack of no one. <laughs> on his bench, uh, Guyton, Dobbs, Jalen Hyatt. Yeah, no more to be said there. Um, I, I don't know who to pick here. I mean, they're I mean, projected. I mean, a part of me loves that David's starting four running backs. I just think that's awesome. Old school, baby. That's fun, man. Just yeah. Three yards in a cloud of dust type yeah. fantasy football here. Um, I'm going Daniel. I'm going Daniel pretty easily. I'm going. Uh, I'm going Dan too, just because he, his he's got a little bit more balance to his to to his team. Here. Yeah, Purdy, those those uh, receivers, and then that tight end. Just get one of those flexes to go off, and you're going to win pretty easily. I think. Yeah. Let's move on here um, to our next matchup. Uh, as we think, we both think Tits McGee comes out victorious. Yeah. I, I like always. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. There's so much. Okay, let's uh, move on here, and this one is. Um, is you. Your boy. Uh, we them boys. We them boys. I changed the name like twice because like, I, I was too vulgar. Uh-huh. Uh, he's taking on Slimy McNuggets. Um, no, no, no mames way. I think it's, I think that's just uh, Spanish. Oh, mames way. Yeah. Yeah, whatever the I don't know what that means. Yeah. I think it's actually his business. He's a barbecue business. Look oh, there up. you go. There you go. Uh, but anyway, uh, Slimy McNuggets taking on Angel Tovar. Honestly, I don't, sli- I don't know Slimy's actual name. So we'll just call him Slimy. Slimy. Um, okay, why don't you tell us about your team because if... Jonathan Taylor was playing. I think you'd be pretty stopped. Yeah, I, I uh, this is I did the strategy of zero RB. Obviously, my headliners for this team is Justin Jefferson, AJ Brown, and Michael Pittman. Strong. Uh, I drafted Mark Andrews, RIP. I drafted Deshaun Watson, RIP. I drafted Kirk Cousins, RIP. Wow. I drafted Jonathan Taylor, RIP. Uh, wow. Not making any excuses, but pretty banged up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I am. I am playing the hot hand a little bit. Tyson. Tyson. Ch- oh, not Tyson Chandler. What's the name? Tyson Chandler, right? Uh yeah yeah okay I am I am playing him and I also got to a, a great pickup red hot start with Zamir White Thursday night you, uh, I, I want to praise the titanium knickknacks on you for throwing in Zamir White because in another league I didn't have it um and I kind of regret it now seeing that seventeen point five up there in your flex has to be exhilarating yeah I'm a little worried about three positions my tight end because I lost Mark Andrews I had nothing behind him is my fault right I'm starting either Logan Thomas or Pat Fryermuth oof. Tough. Mm, so Firemuth is playing the Firemuth is playing It uh, doesn't matter because he has uh um Trubitsky. Trubitsky, so no. And then Logan Thomas is playing the Rams. God, that's a terrible decision to have to make. Yeah. And is then Taysom my, Hill available? Go play Taysom Hill. No, he's not available. No. Uh Kyle and then my quarterbacks are Kyler Murray against San Fran and Desmond Riddler against Carolina. Yeah, I hate your quarterbacks. Um, I think Ritter might eat because it's because it's Carolina. He might be okay. Yeah. But Murray's gonna be pretty much shut down. Yeah, he's gonna. I think he's gonna blow away your quarterbacks, but the rest of your lineup looks, I think, pretty strong to me, especially with that Zamir White start. Like, I think, I think you're have a very, very strong start here. And um, and then I'm playing slimy Mc uh, Mc Nuggets, who is the uh, third seed. Any uh, uh, any Jer- any uh, McKinnon 
Temptation for you or no? Not really. Uh, it, it was between him and him and Zamir White, to be honest. And yeah, okay. that's already solved. Okay, Slimy McNuggets. I'll I'll take his uh, team here. We don't know his first name, so we're just gonna go with Slimy. What up, Slimy? Um, Slimy has Dak Prescott. He's a Cowboy fan, so he probably feels awesome about that. Yep. Uh, Prescott and Stafford. Stafford right now on a heater. That's a that's a one two that you feel really really good about. Absolutely. Um, Derrick Henry at Houston or versus Houston. We all know what happened. What happens to Houston State? You feel really good about that as well. Oh yeah. And then Austin Eckler really, really uh, let Poop, him down here. Poop the bed. So as good as uh, Henry um, does, he's gonna feel like he's needing to get those Austin Eckler points back um, because he's uh, the running back he's facing. I think Chandler has a good game, and then of course Brees Hall is one of the best. His receivers are might be, are as bad as your quarterbacks. Trash. I mean Ridley and Thielen. It, it's crazy that those are his two receivers, and he's. He went nine and five, and does he have hurt players on the bench? Uh, no, no. Uh, he yeah. has Darren Waller on, on IR. I don't know how he did. Oh, okay, yes, I don't. I don't know how he did that with with Thielen and Ridley, but props to you for making it yep. work and going nine and five. Um, Garrett gave him a, Garrett uh, Gerald Everett gave him a decent game to start off. Well, Thielen at one point was a very good wideout. Yeah, I mean, but the yeah, first but half yeah. of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Ever give him give um, him nine points? That, that's that's pretty solid. It's a real pivotal. Um, but he has a very good flex here. Guy down, yeah, yeah. Rashad White has been, it's just been money. Like he's been money all year long, and he he was a very uh, real like RB four on the year. Yeah, very real like sleeper candidate type thing. But he had some hype in the preseason. Um, football wise, I'm not sure if he has a job next year. Fantasy wise, he's been incredible. Very good. Yep. Uh, super inefficient, but it doesn't matter. He's, he's a volume guy. He's getting the points in, and uh, to have him in your flex opposite Zemir White probably makes it feel a little better. Yeah. Obviously, if you ever shot White, you're going to play him. Zach Moss is interesting. Oh, he because, disappointed me again last week. Yeah, he's let – teams picked him up thinking, last time he had the starting job. I told everyone to pick him up and start him with confidence against uh, the Bengals. I did pick him up and start him with confidence, and he let you down because he's just – he's uh, – <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. He's, he's not doing – he's getting the work. He's not doing anything worth the work. Yeah. Um, He plays Pittsburgh this, this week, which is a great matchup, and hopefully it yields at least a you know, touchdown or two. Um, but that's a very shaky start to me. Yeah, I think he bamboozled us and the Colts and everyone who drafted him as that as that he's a good running back. So he chose him over Gus Edwards, uh, Elijah Moore, someone I'd be very very close to playing over Zach Moss, just really? with, the, with, with the work he's getting. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah uh, that's a t- that's a tough play. Okay, let's pick this game. Who? You, who? Well, so he's he's off to a uh, well. You guys are pretty much neck and neck here um, to start. With having played one player. No, sorry. He played two players. Wow. I'm just confident that I beat him with one player. He has two players. Yeah, you're going to win uh, in my mind. Hopefully. I think, I think, I think you're going to take this away and and uh, advance here. I, I got your team. Thank you. I got uh, my team too. Wow. So you and Tits McGee are going to, uh, I think, move on here. Uh, if we talk about any of your players, let us know in the, in the chat um, if you think we're total idiots for what we said. Uh, but I think these four play, these four teams are incredible representations of the bench warmers fantasy football league. Yeah. And next year, if you want to be in it, you can be. Yes. I yeah. don't know how yet, but you can be. <laughs> yeah, we'll bring it up when the time comes in, in a very long time, it feels like. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, good luck to these guys, and good luck to everyone uh, for your fantasy football matchups uh, this weekend um, as you uh, just don't enjoy just any game. painstakingly watch. Yeah. St- Stephon Diggs and hope please don't catch a ball. And the thing, that's the, that's the downside about football happening all weekend. Is that just the pain started Thursday? It's going to yep. happen again tomorrow or yep. today if it's, you're watching Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday's a big fantasy game. Yep. The Seahawks Eagles. Okay, uh, one more thing here. Let's get into the picks for Week 15. Um, we're only doing this a couple more times, so in almost a minute. Let's let, do it. In almost a minute. Last time we did a minute 31. Uh, let me bring up my little timer here on the timing app. Here we go. Reset, and let's get to it. In three, two, the seven and six Vikings. Visiting the Cincinnati Bengals, all set seven six game is in Cincy. I'm taking Jake Browning and the Bengals. Uh, I'm taking the Bengals as well. Uh, Steelers seven and six going to the Colts seven and six. I am not pitching. I am not going to pick Mitch Trubisky. Go Colts! Yeah, go Colts. Gardner Minshew, baby. Uh, Broncos at Lions in one of the biggest games of the week. Uh, Broncos in a, one of the best game of the weekend. <sighs> Broncos, I think, in a gritty win. Yeah, yeah, I think Broncos. Uh, Falcons six and seven, not that bad. If things get serious, Arthur might might have a problem. Yeah, uh, going to the Panthers. Things are very bad. Okay, uh, Falcons. <laughs> yeah, no, Falcons. No. Uh, Bears five and eight. Browns eight and five. 
Uh, Browns. Uh, Fields has a big game, makes a statement against, against the Browns Brown. defense. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, Bucks six and seven at the Packers, also six and seven. I'm taking Jordan Love here. Yeah, I think so. Game. At home, I think Love's going to win. Yeah. Five and eight Jets. Uh, the new and improved Zach Wilson at the nine and four Dolphins. New and improved Zach Wilson, still old Zach Wilson. I'm taking Miami. <laughs> yeah, taking Miami as well. But I think I think Zach Wilson has a better game. Yeah, he looks good. Uh, uh, Devito, who's DeVito. taking the 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 league by storm at five and eight with the Giants, uh, taking on the Saints. Does the magic continue? Uh, no, Saints. Yep, Saints win this game. Uh, sorry, Devito. Uh, seven and six Texans without CJ Stroud going to the Titans. You just said why? I'm taking the Titans. Yeah, Will Levis is gonna win this game and go to six and eight. Uh, eight and five Chiefs in the win that they badly need going to Foxborough. Uh, who you got? Uh, Chiefs in a very close game. I'm yeah. telling you, it's not gonna be a blowout. Yeah, I don't think so either. Uh, Niners are going to destroy the Cardinals. Let's just leave it at there. Yep, Cardinals. Uh, oh, the I'm Commanders. Sorry. Niners, yeah. Uh, Commanders four and nine at the Rams six and seven. Uh, Rams in a must win. Rams. Rams gonna score a lot of points. Yes. Um, the ten and three Cowboys at the seven and six Bills. Jo- my game of the week. Josh Allen and Buffalo. I'm taking them. It's gonna be in Buffalo. Yep. Uh, in the thirties, I believe, at the high forties. A little chilly. Eighty percent chance of rain. That is Buffalo Bills weather, baby. Yes. Um, and the Cowboys don't particularly run the ball well. Uh, Ravens at the Jags. Ravens. Uh, yeah, Ravens as well. Eagles Monday night at the Seahawks. Who you got? Eagles bounce back game for Eagles, sure. Yep, Eagles. I talked way too much there. I I, I, I apologize wasn't say for it. that. I wasn't gonna say it, but you really. I was really into it. You, you know, you I screwed, screwed the, the pooch. pooch. Yeah, I screwed the pooch. Wow. Same I, I, well, I heard you start to say it. Okay. Um, two minutes three seconds. Not great. Not our greatest performance. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. We're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that one minute at some point. Yeah. I still don't know when, but we'll get to it at some point. At some point. Um, obviously, I mean, just looking down this, down this, uh, lineup of games here for week 15, it's going to be an incredible week. We covered some of these bigger games during, uh, Friday's questions. Um, we covered what bills, Cowboys, Eagles, Seahawks, uh, Ravens, Jags, but a couple of good games here. Yeah. Bears, Browns, Justin Fields playing hot. Browns a little banged up. Browns fighting to keep their playoff spot. I think they're number five in, in the AFC right now with yeah. a eight and five record. And the uh, Bears are surging in, in the right direction. If you want to see what Fields is, this is a great game to see. Yeah, this is a good Have him play this this Browns defense. And um, let's see. I want to see him take care of the ball. I want to see him have an efficient passing game. Yep. And I want to see him be a game changer with that running ability. Yeah. And if you see that against this Browns team, I mean, and then uh, very, very promising. Tampa versus Green Bay. That's a good game. It's a low-key, very, very yeah. competitive and meaningful game for both these both – these, uh, both these teams, yeah, the Packers Bucks. in that little mix of NFC, yeah. NFC wild card, and then the Bucks at six and seven, very strong candidate to win the uh, NFC uh, South. Yeah, Bucks fighting for the division, <laughs> which is great. I think the, right now they they have it, so yeah. fighting to keep it. Yeah, um, and that, and amongst the other games, there would be really good storylines. Uh, but yeah, that's week fifteen. It's going to be very very fun. All starting on Saturday, I believe at one o'clock. Yeah, starting with the Vikings, Bengals, then Steelers, Colts, and then ends off <sighs> with Broncos, wait. Lions. God, listen, it's late Friday. I got everything done with my family today, so that tomorrow and Sunday, I can just sit down and watch football. Yeah, it's gonna be freaking very excited. Awesome. That is our show for today. Thanks so much for joining us for episode number sixty six uh, for Friday and our, our Friday and Saturday show. Yeah, the um, weekend show. Yeah. Enjoy the weekend. You guys show. have a great weekend watching football. Enjoy it. These weeks are winding down. Yep. Oh, boy. And then good luck. Fantasy football playoff. See you. Bye.